Tell you what, though, when you are sort of... Because when you're in hospital, you've got a lot of time just to sit there and think about stuff. And uh, what I was thinking about is, what is the closest thing to sort of living that's nothing? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what? What's, like, the closest... Like, do you know, at some point, something's gone from nothing to something, hasn't it? No, I don't... No, I don't understand what you mean. Something... At, at some point, people were nothing, and then something happened and they were something. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But they were never you, nothing, you, were they? Do you mean what is the, the, the first and lowest and most primitive and most simple form of life? No, He's so, right here in this room, Rick. <laughs> say, say, like, when you look at a, a stick insect, right? you go, right, there's a slight crossover there from a stick to a living thing. No, it's not. It didn't used to be a no, stick. No, 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 it's not. There's no, there's no, there's no biological relationship between it and a stick. But the, there isn't much difference between the two, is what I mean. Of course there is. It's a huge there isn't. Difference. They just, they just sit there looking like a stick. That's their skill. Yes, but there's nothing to do with being a stick. It's, it's like camouflage. That's like saying when a soldier puts on combat gear, you get, you're saying he's a cross between a human and a shrub. <laughs> He's not a cross between a human and a shrub. No, is but, he? That's, but that's that's man-made from a distance stuff. you can't see him. That's the same as the stick insect. No, but that isn't what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, have you seen them weird things that just look like they they, they sort of look like a leaf? Yeah, there are insects that look, that that have evolved to look like a leaf. So a bird thinks, oh, there's no there's no tea there. No, that's not I, a juicy I, insect. It's a leaf. I don't eat leaves. Yeah, but Forget it. At some it. point, something has had it away with a leaf. No, what? at to... no point has something had it away with a leaf. No, to make it look that much like no. a leaf. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> at no point did a beetle shag a leaf. There's nothing on a genetic level or molecular level uh, and anything to do with it having anything to do with a stick or a leaf. It's superficial. It's the way it looks. That's all it. It, that's like saying chameleons must have mated with green once. They are green. No, but it what, looks like a leaf. What I don't understand is it has evolved to blend in perfectly with its surroundings and fool predators. But then, how does it meet? How does it have relationships? It will be going around, sort of having it away with a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> no, it won't, because it doesn't know what it looks like. It doesn't matter. They do it with pheromones and attraction and. Uh, they, it, it's not like they, uh, it, it, you know, um, a stick insect will be talking to a stick for ages and go, oh, I've wasted my time here. <laughs> this club's dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rude. I was chatting to her. She was foxy, but she was giving me nothing. But, Dave, that's that's not a stick insect. That's a stick. What, what are you talking about? That's a stick. You've been talking to a stick all night. I, thought, oh, I can't believe it. I just thought she had a great slim figure. No, no, it's actually a real stick. But I've been I've been reading a lot about... You know, I like spiders and stuff, just reading about them. Mm. Uh, and there's one, right? Mm -hmm. It's got big legs. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't use them. Um, it goes around floating in the air on a bit of webbage. Um, <laughs> like a he just took a gamble then, didn't he? He took a gamble. He thought, do you know what? I'm going to go with webbage. <laughs> Don't know if it's a word, not sure, but I could just <laughs> say web, but I'm going to go with webbage. I'm going to risk it. <laughs> And it didn't oh. pay off, did it? <laughs> Webbage! <laughs> Webbage! But that's how it gets about. It's in the air like a kite. Yeah, it's I've, just floating about. I've seen one, yeah. So that's what I'm saying about weirdness. Mm. The way all that goes on, and this is what I can't get my head round. You, you have got your head round. <laughs> <laughs> but do, do they get ill, then? <laughs> it's just... For those listening at home, he has just bumped his head against the microphone. Trying to mate with it because it's perfectly round, this microphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing Carl has been doing over the past few months is writing his diary. He's kept that up. Um, I don't know what he's had to write about. All he's been doing is looking at moths and ants and bees and going for walks. But I'm sure it's all in the diary. So uh, let's have a look at that. Oh, I don't believe it. He's only got to write it down. We went to the park and had a brew. Suzanne read the paper while I played with the ladybird. <laughs> I mean, it's like a child, isn't it? It is like what a child would <laughs> Suzanne read the paper while I played with the ladybird. <laughs> oh, 
His only friend is a beetle. <laughs> it climbed up my arm. It struggled on me hairs. This is in detail, then. Yeah, 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 yeah. It kept stopping every now and then and was rubbing its head with its right arm. It did it about four times and always used its right arm. It rested for about five minutes, then flew off. Sunday. Had a bit of a to-do with Suzanne because she wanted a lion today. I ate this. Once you're awake, you should get up. I got up and put the radio on really loud. She eventually got up. I told her insects don't have lions, so we shouldn't. <laughs> Why are you obsessed I with mean, insects? You must be fucking unbearable to live with. <laughs> You must be a nightmare. No, I've just started, because I've watched insects a lot, I don't want to keep going on about them because we're a bit insect heavy. But at the end of the day, if we if we copied insects, we wouldn't go far wrong. I don't know what you mean, though. One minute you're saying they're great, then the next minute you'll slag them off. Yeah, I'll slag some of them off if I don't know what they're doing, but because I've studied them a bit longer... I just think they, they do You it haven't right. studied them, he, he thinks he's like Darwin. You, but you just slagged them off and again, don't you think people, uh, insects are doing stuff? They're not. It yeah, goes there, then it goes back again. The ant was. The ant was messing about. But only that one, the others were carrying stuff. That's what I'm saying. These snidey ones in everything. In every everything in the world, you get a hierarchy. <laughs> oh, long words! Ooh. The bookshelf was dusty, so Suzanne asked me to dust it if I get a minute. I ended up looking at every book. <laughs> just the spine yeah. just for a few seconds each yeah didn't open them I looked in the dictionary to see if the word dictionary would be in the dictionary I didn't think they would bother with it being on the front page but it was in the book as well it's a good point though isn't it no it's not a good point because you didn't tell us anything dictionary is in the dictionary well, of course it is well, why if you, if you go, how do you spell dictionary? You look at the spine and you go, oh, there it is, D I C T. So what does what does dictionary mean? It's a book full of words, isn't it? That's what it means. All books are full of words, you idiot. How to spell them? And if you don't know, no, what it's it not is, how to spell them. All right then. Well, how do you look up something? No, 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 no. It's not a book full of words to tell us. What, no, it's the meaning. Give us it's the, the definition, definition of dictionary. Meaning. It's a book full of words. If you want to know what the meanings are, but if you didn't know, well, that, I'm sorry. What was that sentence? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, if you didn't know that, then you wouldn't be looking in it, because you wouldn't know the book is about that. So, if you don't know the word dictionary and what it means, you wouldn't be looking at the dictionary, you'd be looking at an A to Z. <laughs> because you Why leave it out, though? Just because there's so many words in the world, I, I would have thought they wanted to cram as much as they can on a page, and if dictionary is already on the front... Is that why you suddenly used the word hierarchy for the first time ever? Did you find that in there? Did you look? At, did you see hierarchy in the dictionary? I feel I that, that that big was. word has pushed out about 26 other more useful ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, Suzanne's been going on about me learning another language. But I sort of think your brain has only got so much room on it. And the rest of it's filled with lard. So, <laughs> if I've got to learn everything I know, again, but in a different language, it's taking up space, isn't it? You don't learn everything. Oh, God. It's all, it's all storage, mean? isn't it? But you don't have to learn it again. You don't have to learn the concepts again. You're merely learning vocabulary. Do you know how many vocabulary. moves there are in the human brain? You really, you don't worry. You won't use them all up. I feel that he has reached his capacity, then. Yeah. Well, you need a, another sort of... You, you need an update. You need some more memory. Woke up to some interesting news. It's good when this happens, because it sets me up for the day ahead. If it's miserable news, it affects my day. It said on the news that they have found two new flies. <laughs> What have you done? Is that all you've done this summer? Bong. <laughs> trouble in the Middle East. Bong. Two new flies found. Ladybird climbs up arm. <laughs> they were found in the UK <laughs> and they were found close to each other. Maybe this happened because they were different than the other flies and weren't expected to hang about together, so that's why they knocked about with each other. That would happen, wouldn't it? What do you mean? It's two new flies. Yeah, <laughs> do you mean, does it mean there are two new flies that are a different species? species? Yeah, two new species, and they found them close to each other, right? Yeah, but they, they didn't mean there was one of each. No, yeah, yeah, they did. They found two different ones. No. No, they have. Seriously, I know that. That's right, that's a fact. So you've got, like, I don't know the names of them. They give them odd names, don't they? Well, so <laughs> yeah. you call it A and Fly B, right? Yeah. Fly A, I don't know, uh, was it say that's orange? <laughs> B. Lively, yeah. No, this is painful. No, this is painful. I'm just painful. making it easy but for you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, fine. Now, they found the orange one. I went, look at this over here. 
which is a bit weird. And they've gone, oh, that's a new species. Log it, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then the other one went, oh, 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 keep your pen handy. Look at this one. It's got a hat on. So then they, they found them both within the same distance. I don't know what that sentence means. Keep going, keep going, keep going. They, found, let him him both, finish. they <laughs> found them both within the same <laughs> distance. <laughs> Without <laughs> interrupting him, <laughs> let him finish this, no. this point. Let me just make one thing clear. Carl Pilkin has just said, they found them both within the same distance. <laughs> Think of that! <laughs> don't know what it means, but go on, let him finish this, this point. So, so what I mean is, they weren't knocking about with other normal houseflies, because they were probably sort of going, oh, he's a bit weird. Leave it. <laughs> Yeah, because the other one was also odd, they're, not, they're hanging about with each other. Don't you understand that? Why is that such an odd concept? Because <laughs> you think you think of it as like two little um, uh, new kids in school. Yeah. They, they find they're both new and they they've got something. Yeah, they're, both, they're both goths. So yeah. They yeah. Uh, and this was on the news, was it? Yeah, just on the radio. Yeah. I know if I look into that story. It would be 90% wrong. Bit tired today because didn't get to sleep as early as I wanted due to a moth getting in the bedroom. Fuck <laughs> me! I got it in a glass and looked at it for a bit and then let it go because Suzanne wanted to go to sleep. Looked up some interesting news. Some people dug up an old body in Ireland. Turns out it's well old and was here when dinosaurs were here. The really weird bit is it had hair gel in its hair. Right, what is it? A fella. Well, no, it wasn't around when dinosaurs were here then. Just a bit after. Right, fine. A lot after, yeah, go on. It's I think any hominid, anything that could even be linked to anything that may become man is only about a million years old. And I think Homo sapiens is probably only about 150,000 years old. Dinosaurs are about 150 million to, to 250 million. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not the age bit. That's amazing. It's the fact of there's a fella... Won't have even had shoes on his feet. Right. And yet he was worried about his hair style. Right, well, that's definitely not true either. This is unbelievable. Well, there was a man on the radio doing poetry, says Carl in his diary. I thought I'd have a go at doing a poem about today. <clears throat> not really. He hasn't, Steve, I'm, I'm a little bit queasy. He hasn't really written a poem. He's written a, a small poem. No, he hasn't really. Yes. If moths had eyes... <laughs> <laughs> let, let me read the poem, okay? Oh, fuck. You wouldn't interrupt T.S. Eliot. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, okay. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? How do they know they're not dead? <laughs> Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the hair on their head. <laughs> What would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. Right. It may be the greatest poem no, ever written. Just, just, you know, dissecting it briefly, you attempt to rhyme in the first four lines, but abandon the rhyming system in the last three, is there a creative decision have, for that? Can we have Carl read that? Well, Sorry, means, yeah. just, uh, no, just, you, just you read it as you would like to. So this is, uh, imagine this, right, okay. This is going out all over the world, this this podcast. And now um, Carl Pilgrim, a new poet from Manchester, now living in uh, London, England, would like to read a, a poem. If moths had eyes, would they be up here? <laughs> How do they know they're not dead? Cavemen hunting for food but not before they style the air on their head. <sighs> what would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. <laughs> <laughs> he said it as though the last one was going to rhyme. <laughs> he said it like it was going to rhyme. Oh, God. No, I it's think, amazing. I think it's I... amazing. I think Stop. he feels. I think he feels as though the final line, "I'd rather be a blind moth," is going to be one of those great, you know, those, a, a summation that the, somehow the moth is a metaphor. I'd the caveman. Be a blind moth. No, what there's no metaphor doing? in that. He really does mean he'd, he'd rather, rather be, be a blind, blind moth. moth. Yeah, well, I'm just because I've looked at the day's news. Can we always do that, Carl? Can we always find a day, right, and always sum it up in your in thoughts a poem. and poem, just like that? I love that structure. 
I, I love that structure. If there's any um, English students or professors um, or novelists or poets listening, um, please email us what I thought of that poem, why it's good, why it's bad. So, you know, give us your thoughts uh, on that. I mean, we would love expert opinion, um, poets, um, English professors. Uh, just email us at, at podcast at rickygervais.com. Mm. Oh, he's only got it really down there. Wow. That's the jingle for Carl's Diary. We have bacon and egg on toast. I'm eager to get through the brown sauce, as the bottle is too big to go in any cupboard, so it has to be left on the sideboard. <laughs> so I had about four dollops of the stuff. I love it, because, you know, that made it into the diary. He's concerned about the fact that brown sauce know, is too big, so he's rushing through it. I know, but I'm just saying the kitchen isn't that big, and it looks messy when you leave stuff out, doesn't it? And we've got this giant brown sauce bottle, and I don't want to chuck it away, because that'd be a waste. So you're having brown sauce and everything, everything your cornflakes yeah. in your tea. Yeah. A wasp got in the flat. You know trouble's brewing. <laughs> it was massive. The biggest wasp ever. Suzanne asked me to get it out, but I wanted to take a picture of it first. <laughs> I was getting my phone ready when it flew at me. I reckon the sting on it could have killed a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> so specific. It ended up flying out the window on its own. Uh, Drama over it. Oh, God. We went out for tea. You're always in a caf. That's what you, this diary. You're all, you spend so much time in a cafe. There were loads of flying ants. I kept kicking the table because I could feel them on my legs. I wouldn't be that jumpy normally, but I still had flashbacks of the giant wasp from the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne told me to stop being stupid because I was ruining a night out. A night out in a caf. <laughs> Really? Oh, what, was God. Her, what was it? Her birthday? And flashbacks from an incident. Yeah. Like he's some sort of like war veteran. <laughs> what is it? It's the wasp. It could have killed a kitten. Bought some wallpaper. We got back and got on with it. The wall that we've papered before has got a big mirror under it. We papered on top of it again. I ended up reading the phrase book while Suzanne did the rest of the tidying up. Now, what's your phrase book? I don't. This is this is just you trying to master English, is it? It's just a book that tells you little sayings and how they came about. An interesting phrase is pot luck. It came about when all people ate is stews. They used to chuck all sorts of stuff into the stew. You stuck your spoon in, and sometimes you got something nice like beef, or you could end up with a bit of frog. It's pot luck. <laughs> Good, That's what it said in the book, did it? A bit of frog. Got up and checked the wallpaper out. There are loads of air bumps and it's buckled <laughs> on the joins. I wish we'd never done it. <laughs> Suzanne said the washer was broke and it's out of his warranty. She called up the people who made it and they said it will cost £150 to fix. I don't know how they know that when they haven't even seen it. I want to smash it to bits and see what they can do. For <laughs> <laughs> so much anger. <laughs> I want to smash it to bits. <laughs> oh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? 150, you sure? Yeah, Come yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's just like a cube. It's been yeah. through one of those car crushes. Yeah. 150 quid, there's 150 quid, fix it. Yeah. I watched the news and calmed down a bit because there was a story about some Siamese twins who were having an operation. They've got two heads, four arms, two legs, one liver. The doctor said they will have one leg each. I felt bad worrying about the washer when people have bigger problems like the Siamese twins. Ricky and Steve asked me to do a poem about one day a week, so I thought I'd do one today. I can't obviously do it justice, so I should let the master read it. You've done another poem? Yeah, you said, you know, just, just do one. If you have a day where you've had a lot of emotions. Well, I, I loved the poem, and so did uh, the listeners, and I knew they would. So if you can do that every week, that would be a joy well, you for can't, me. You can't force a poem, though. No, I so know. A diary is easy to do because you just write down yeah. what you're doing. But yeah. you, you've got to have some really meaty subject matter to be able to write a poem, Rick, as you'll discover. I know. Right, so, you know, you've heard what problems I had that day. Go on, then. Bubbled wallpaper. What a mess. <clears throat> Washer dry and knackered. What a mess. Siamese twins separated. One leg less. <laughs> scheme that is again <laughs> oh god oh, oh god oh fuck <laughs> <laughs> oh, me 
what have you got now? Right, so we, we're looking into animals that we get rid of. I've spoken to someone about snails, I've spoke to someone about jellyfish and that, and uh, looking at cockroaches today. Right, now who's the expert? Um, it's a woman called uh, Jessica Marshall. Right. Does she know that you're going to play this on the radio? Well, I called up, right, in the week and said, can I talk to someone about Just... cockroaches? And she was like, is that Carl? She knows who you are. Yeah. Right, so she already knows maybe your angle, your approach. Yeah. She and uh, she, she's an expert, she's just not, not just some random... Person. No, she works in a museum, where, a good museum, I said I'd give it a plug. It's a one near Knightsbridge, it's got dinosaurs and that in it, it's worth seeing. Well, and that's his museum? Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> not sure. <laughs> He's not sure. <laughs> this is Go what on. happened. Now, what I'll do, I'll tell you as much as, as I know, and then you can fill me in if I'm right or wrong, and then at the end of it, we'll get to the bottom of whether we need them or not. Okay. All right, so uh, first of all, uh, the first thing that, that, I, that I found out is that, um, that they have 18 knees. Uh, that's not exactly possible. They're insects, so they have six legs. Yeah. And a knee is usually the junction between femur and tibia. That's sort of classic human knee and every other animal knee. So with six legs, you can only have six knees. Uh, could somebody sort of got mistaken for seeing one that was a bit double-jointed? Uh, I think you were grasping at straws or something. All right, well, uh, well, we might have to come back to that one then. Okay. Um, they can hold the breath for 40 minutes. Well, they don't do that because they don't breathe in the same way as us. They breathe through little spiracles, holes down the, the side of the body, so, um, no. If they're it, not a very apt simile because the, the method of breathing is so different. What do you mean? Because insects have a, a totally different system. They don't have lungs in the way that we do, and just breathing through one part of the body. They're, they're actually breathing through every segment of the body all of the time. So even though they've got their mouth shut, they might... Be able no, to slide. It's nothing to do with breathing. So you just feeding. So you see, maybe that's where someone's gone wrong. Someone's got hold of one and sort of taped its mouth up or something, and it was. got bored after forty <laughs> minutes and said, "Well, we'll call it right." That's a unkind thing to do to an insect, even to a cockroach. Yeah, but it's all. You can't do that. Yeah, but. No, pretty unkind thing to do anything to anything, even a cockroach. Something else I found out. Yeah. They can live for a week without an head. Well, that's true if they don't bleep to death in the process. But the weird thing is, when I told you that they had 18 knees, you seemed a bit sort of, like, don't don't talk ridiculous. But yeah. then we're talking about an animal that can live without an head. Uh, so, so there's a little bit of truth in that one, yeah? Yes. Why, when it was invented, has it got that facility? Say if someone said to humans, we could do that with humans, and, you know, if you lose your head in some accident, it gives you a bit of time to sort of go back to your, to your family and maybe write them, write them a note. You won't be able to have a chat, but write them a note saying it was my own fault and uh, it was nice knowing you. Oh, well, that would be a useful facility, I agree. But cockroaches are great survivors. I mean, they've been around for over 300 million years. They're one of the most primitive insects. All right. Well, I've also... Um, is it true that they do a lot of resting? Apparently they can sort of rest for 75% of the time. Yeah, they just just sit about doing nothing. It's probably true of a, a vast proportion of, of the world's fauna. Well, I mean, not... maybe maybe the twenty five uh, percent that they are working, they're really giving it some, so and it might make probably up. Probably searching out food, and uh, yeah, they can slow down considerably. You can chill insects in the fridge, and they'll become very very quiet. You might think they're dead. Yeah, but well, I'm sure you know if, if we were sat in a fridge, you know, we'd go a bit quiet, wouldn't we? You know. Well, uh, you might not know much about it, of course. Yeah, but... Not quite reading the, the right sources. Well, I've been using the internet. I'm sure there are many useful sources that you could find there, but some of those seem to have been a little um, misleading to you. So, so you don't agree with, with a lot of what I've told you there? No. So, cockroaches, can we get rid of them? No. So we're keeping them then? I would say so, yeah. <laughs> I 
I think we should get her on more often because she sounds like she'd be a bit of an ally, really. Because she knew immediately that you were talking nonsense. She even said, I think you should be more concerned about your sources, which I've been trying to tell you for a year. Right? The fact, I mean, I mean 18 knees, where did you get that from? It's uh, it on the internet. Uh, there's a lot of talk, Carl, that I bully you. Okay? You know, it's for your own good. I'm trying to train you, aren't I? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because, and no disrespect, okay, you are a, what I would call a stupid idiot. Well, can I just ask, because I've, there's been an awful lot of emails that have said, will you and Steve please uh, stop calling Carl stupid? Now, right. they say, oh, he doesn't, just, just doesn't justify calling him stupid. Now, I don't know what part of injecting a 76-year-old woman in the head so that she lives her life backwards well, couldn't be considered stupid. Okay, then listen, right, I'm gonna, I've found some things that I think will interest you. And I want your first thoughts on these, okay? Now, these are facts that I've sourced, mm. okay? What's the, what's the actual topic? Well, you love animals, don't you? You're interested in animal some facts. Some of them. I don't, mm. I don't love them. They, they, some of them fascinate me and stuff. But a lot of them also get on my nerves. I don't know how an animal can get on your nerves. They just, they just do. Sometimes you sort of just think, what are they doing here? What, what are they offering anyone? Right. See, I'm worried that these facts will annoy you now, but they're meant to fascinate you, and... Okay. No, I, I think anything's good as long as it gets you thinking. It doesn't matter what opinion you have of something. Yeah. But as long as it gets a, a reaction. Okay, then, here you go. Right. Um, there's a frog, Carl. Just a little frog, a poison arrow frog, that contains enough poison to kill over a thousand human beings. Why is it that annoyed? It's not annoyed. Well, why is it going about killing a thousand people? No, it has the potential to. It has enough poison, it has enough toxin in it that could kill a thousand human beings. But does it, it does it need that? Whereabouts is this? Where's it living? In the rainforest, I think. And does it need that sort of power? Is it in that much... Is it, is, is it getting threatened a lot, is what I mean? Well, no, because it's saying, don't come near me, and it shows it with its colours. It's got the colours that say it doesn't want to be eaten. It doesn't want people to chew a bit, right, and go, oh... I'm an idiot. It's saying, look at my colours, don't eat me. Don't You don't want to come near me. But then why give it bright colours? Because now it's standing out. Yeah, and it's going, don't eat me. Yeah, but make it a colour that fits in, like camouflage. Why why make it orange? Of course it's going to stand out, and then they'll attack it, and then it'll turn around and bite them and kill a thousand men or whatever. No, it doesn't bite. It's the fact that if you were to eat it, you would die. Yeah, but who's, I mean, who's going to eat it? Well, things that eat frogs. The French. <laughs> <laughs> and they yeah. go, Sacre bleu! You have killed me and 999 <laughs> of my friends! But why... Why is everything, like, surviving like this, though? I thought it was all about survival of the fittest, not yeah. the one who looks the hardest. Well, but survival of the fittest is whether you're chosen or not by nature. No, but I I'd survive if I could go about killing a thousand men at one bite. It's not fair. It doesn't bite. It's well, whatever, if it licks you or whatever. But no, it it, not if it licks you, if you lick it. Well, I'm not going to lick it. It's not, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I don't, I will not be licking a frog. So it's, it's of no danger to me. So I could still kill it, and there's no chance, at no point am I going to lick a, a little frog's head. Not when it's alive or when it's dead. <laughs> I love the fact it's all about you. It's all about how it relates to you. And he's annoyed that they're, like, they're getting away with something. He doesn't, he doesn't like any sly animals. He doesn't like animals hiding. He don't, he, then he wants them. He doesn't want animals um, killing things. Then he wants them to kill things. He doesn't know what he wants. When they say survival of the fittest, they don't mean that, say, lions have been working out in a gym. It means, the fittest, it means the fittest gene pool, and the fittest gene pool is a gene pool that's still around. That's all it is. Yeah, if but... it's here, it worked. I was trying to explain to you the other day, a slug is as evolved as us. It's not, though, is it? It is. It's not. You think evolution is aiming towards Miles being away human. Miles where we are. What? It's nowhere near what we're like. But, but you're looking at it in terms of, like, th this evolution has a will. It doesn't have a will. It's chosen or it's not chosen by nature. A slug uh, got it right. A slug has it got hasn't. it as right as... What do you mean it hasn't? Well, what was it like before it got it right? <laughs> <laughs> 
but I think you think, Carl, that, that evolution is moving towards some kind of super being. Perhaps we're like the most advanced so far, but that one day we'll also have wings I agree with and that. Superman no, type powers. Some, no, but something can happen in nature. There could be something like there could be less light, there could be more light, there could be meteor storms. There, there could be a th there could be something that happen in nature, right? An external force, which means it. it, it the paradigm goes back to naught. So then something that very unlikely would be the last thing to survive. There could, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. I still don't think you've got the concept. It's one of the simplest concepts. It's one of the simplest models. This is why Darwin's a genius. But you think that everything, slugs, cats, are all somehow, they, their, their ambition is to be like us, to be human, or to, to have the but, attributes but, like us, that they can speak, they can talk, they can only, think, they can act. Only because, they don't. Yeah, but only, I only think that because when you see people with these pets, lizards, cats, whatever, they treat them like the humans. So I think if you do that enough times... They're going to start getting familiar with Again, certain... Planet of the Apes. No, yeah. I'm talking... Of say, like of the Apes. You, say like you with your cat, the way you talk to it, you give it a little cheeky massage and that when it's stressed out. And no, 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 you made that up that it's it was stressed cat. out. It's I'm just playing with my cat, right? If anything, the, the, the cat is to de-stress me. So you're talking to your cat, Rick. Is it answering back much? How are the conversations going with your cat? Well, it's, I have more intelligent conversations <laughs> with my cat than I do with yeah, him. Yeah, here's one, right? Me, we, when my gran died, right, um, she, she had this rubbish dog. Right, and that's all we got left. Uh, it's like this little poodle. <laughs> that was it was rubbish. Right. Right. Um, it was called Fluffy, and like my gran looked after it in a way that it was treated like a human. Do you know what I mean? Had a little coat on when it went out and all that. Um, anyway, so she died. We get left it. My dad's like, oh bloody hell, right? Uh, before you know it, it, only took about a month. It was a wreck. Because we, we weren't sort of bathing it the way she bathed it. We let it out if he wanted to go out. He got covered in oil. He used to go under the car and everything. So it's, it went from looking like this fluffy, you know, poodle to just being a bit of a wreck. He got it by a car. It ran sideways like a crab and all that. <laughs> in the now, course of how long? A month? Probably about two, two months or something. Yeah. Now, so it went from being over-treated to just being treated like a dog. Yeah. But a dog, dog isn't, uh, you know, is not a, a indigenous species anywhere. We sort of bred those from, you yeah, know, but jackals it, all or I'm wolves. Is change it, take away the dog thing, give someone a frog, and they'll still overdo it. They'll be trying to treat it like if you had a frog. I mean, that lizard thing you've got, salamander. It's it's still sort of treated as part of the family, even though well, it's not. not. As, I mean, how is it treated as part of the family? Just the way you know it's looked after that big area that it's got to itself. We, we stick it in a case and feed it a cricket now and again. It, how is that like one of the family? It doesn't matter because it's in your flat. <laughs> it is in Carl's family. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's in your flat, in it, and it's sat in that corner. I just mean, as time goes on, yeah. things, things get educated as they get older. How old's that lizard? You don't. How old is it? About 15 years old. Right. Now, it knows more now than it did when you got it, because it's been in those surroundings. It's had its eye on things. Well, no, what do you think it knows? What do you mean it knows more now? They act on instinct. What, 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 what does it learn? It knows when it hears the noise of a plastic case being unwrapped that yeah. a cricket's going to fall down any second. Yeah, That's well, all it, it knows. Yeah, but it didn't know that in the jungle. So it's already one up. What else has it learned? Well, uh, I mean, I it's know. 15, so presumably it listens to a lot of Linkin Park, <laughs> goes on the internet a lot. <laughs> no, but do, do, do you know what I mean? You've already proved your point. It's like that fella who kept hitting the dog on the head with a stick. Right, I've Pavlov, been... at no point did he hit a dog on the head with a stick. But he kept doing it, and eventually the dog went, I'm sick of this, and wandered <laughs> off, <laughs> <didn't it? laughs> Pavlov, yeah. there. Brilliant. Why didn't you write up his experiments? Because he, he did it a little bit different to that. I, lo I love that. Do you know what I'd like to do? A programme where you rewrite, you paraphrase someone's theory. So Pavlov first we could do uh, um, Freud give us you know, what do you know about Sigmund Freud the father of psychoanalysis right come on in I don't know anything on him well look him up educating Carl that's your next week right let's do another podcast next week then they'll get an extra one free the people who paid for it right uh, we're going to hear about Sigmund Freud okay mm. here's an interesting fact if the, the frog annoyed you this might annoy you a blind chameleon will still change colour to match its surroundings. You're aware that the chameleon can... Yeah, whatever it, whatever it sits on. Yeah. But then what, what happens when you put one of them on a mirror? <laughs> no, does it get stressed out or what? What's, what's it copying? 
<laughs> well, it probably doesn't need to copy anything because it looks at itself and it goes, oh, it looks like that's brilliant. God, that was fast. That's the fastest I've ever done that. That is brilliant. So they, they can go any colour. There's nothing. You can put them on anything and they'll go to the thing. I, w- I, I don't want you to have a chameleon because you'd just be trying to see what it could and couldn't Try and do. Try catch it out. I know, yeah. Pop it on some tartan. But yeah. again, <laughs> say, like, say like the frog thing, right? Pop it on the telly. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't do it fast enough. <laughs> Why does the chameleon need that skill of copying a colour? Because at the end of the day, that lizard, a chameleon, whatever, that's that's mainly sticking in the, in the woods, isn't it? By trees, by grass. Right. Why can't it just stay green? That's all it needs. That, that those colour changes are only for camouflage, aren't they? I don't know. Some of them are for attraction. Some of them to show moods, anger. No, but I, I just think we're encouraging them. You see, maybe this is evolution or whatever, but at the end of the day, because they can change colour, they're wandering out of their area. They can be wandering about, you know, through a car park and everything, just because they'll go, well, I don't want to get seen, change the colour of c- concrete. <laughs> Whereas, or into the colour of a Fiat Punto. But they should just stay green. Stay green, right, stay in the woods and stay safe. <laughs> Public information for chameleons. Words of advice for chameleons. <laughs> oh god. Stay green. Stay in the woods. Uh, stay safe. Good night. Oh god. Why are there blind chameleons around? I'm assuming that the blindness has no impact on the the colour change. Presumably, is an automatic. It must process. be. But then that's not going to wander about much anyway, is it? If it's blind. It'll probably stay where it is. So it doesn't need to keep changing. If you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean. No. I never do though. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, the only time a turkey whistles is when it panics. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas time, then. Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? It goes from one extreme to another, doesn't it? You've got a frog who's going mental. It's not going mental. Killing thousands of people. No, that's not... That's got that sort of power. Then you've got a turkey who's whistling for help. <laughs> <laughs> you think that you should redress the balance a little bit? You want to give... What would you do? Give the frog the ability to kill 500 and the turkey 500? Um, I don't think you should be killing, uh, I reckon, 10. 10, because... You've made your point with 10, haven't you? Do you well, think that he's got 1,000 in his lifetime, like he's got 1,000 to kill? I don't think you understand. I just think... He doesn't really kill 1,000 people. That, that, that stat is about that if you were to boil up a frog, decant of the poison, there would be enough poison to split between 1,000 people and kill them. It doesn't mean someone goes... Frog, you have the power to kill 1,000 people in your lifetime. Choose them wisely. <laughs> but I just think if it needs that sort of power... power. It should be fighting evil. Well, it's not... <laughs> it's, it's knocking about the wrong area, isn't it? If it's under that much danger, move. <laughs> <laughs> Talking yesterday um, to uh, Matt Robinson, the, the guy I did the, the film with that you came over and um, did a part in that we, we've cut... Um, and uh, his dad is a as a doctor and um, um, used to used to go around the world and stuff. And when he was about ten, he went on holiday, and they were driving through Indonesia to 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 get to somewhere else. I forget where, but they came across this village where he said the spiders have won. Okay, they drive in. As you're driving in, he could see these things sort of hanging from the trees and the sort of telegraph poles. And as they got closer, he realised they were just big spiders. They just made webs everywhere, and he could see them on the street, OK? He said it freaked him out. They parked up in this, this uh, the sort of like the high street, and he said he got out, and they were running on the pavements, like pigeons and rats, just running everywhere. Oh, he said the kids were playing with them. The kids were playing with them. There was no one else freaked out less. He said he oh. ran to the restaurant. They had to stop. He ran into the restaurant, freaked out. He got into the restaurant, and there was a tarantula on the floor. And he ran back in the car. And and he said he said later to his dad, was that a dream? And his dad went, no, it's true. You know, it's, it's a real place, right? He was telling me, I said, that's, that's the worst place in the world. He was looking it up. He was trying to Google it, and he put in, he can remember the name of this place, Indonesia, and he put in Spider Village, Indonesia, right? And he couldn't find it. But another one came up in Cambodia, and it was there, and it was, he said it was exactly the same, just as bad, a place where just spiders have won, okay, but in this place, they eat them. They eat the spiders, the local yeah. inhabitants eat the spiders? Yeah. Wow. So, 
it's just, this town is just dense with spiders. It's They're just everywhere. Dense, they, they're just happy there. No one's killing them. No one's doing anything. But are you just treading on them as you walk down yeah, the street? Yeah, he said oh. it's just they're just they've just taken over. There's a place in off Madeira they called Spider Island where no one lives there, but um, with absolutely no predators. There's just there's just millions yeah. of spiders, but no one lives but there. How do you prevent the spiders? You know, when you're sleeping, crawling in, getting in. You your don't. Nose they just not, they just put up with them. I, sp- I suppose it's that you know they're they're no weirder than any other insect or pest or whatever you you call them it's just i suppose because it's you think of spiders as loners yes. and they're the, and they're the, the top sort of phobia and it seems weird that they're almost treated like pets but isn't that a weird place though that you drive in and it's just oh hello welcome to spider town i couldn't be dealing with it i mean my mum wouldn't be that bothered she's still got that one that's under the telly she's had that for ages and my dad threatened her that he was going to kill it because he's sick of it She's put a bit of uh, Tipex on its back, so she knows. What? So she knows. Well, how many spiders are there? What, you think you kill it and then replace it out of guilt? It's not like a budgie. No, but you can sort of say, oh, I don't know, it's gone. And then if one turns up again, it'll go, your spider's back. Yeah. But now she's marked it. What, so hang on, it... it well, that's, a, that's weird. It has a web underneath the telly. It's always under the telly, I don't think it bothers with a web. But it's, what do you mean she keeps a spider under the telly? It's just there, and she's sort of like, it's not a problem, they get rid of flies, they're not dirty. It just well, it doesn't get there. rid of flies if it sits there watching Coronation Street. It doesn't Street. do much, honestly, it can be there in a corner, I don't know what it does, I don't know, it I, 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 just sits there. But she likes the fact that it's there, it's that thing, in it, of... Uh, Older people like that, don't they? They don't like change. It's like part of the family, you know. All the kids have left home now. She's got this little spider with tipex on its head. <laughs> I like the way that she went into a drawer. She had an idea. She was worried about it. She was worried about her husband killing it. I know. This is for your own good. Yeah. Good tipex. Pop that on you. And you've been round there with the spider that doesn't freak you. Well, I'm out. going round this weekend. So, I, but I used to always sit on the floor to watch the telly. Yeah. Now it's like I'm not sitting on the floor. You'd be watching Spider Man. It would be criticising. Well, that wouldn't happen. What does your mum think of it? Does she think it's like a little pet, or she doesn't want to get rid of it? I think it is a pet because, like, you know, she's had loads of cats. She's had dogs. She's got a budgie. And now my dad's sort of saying, "Don't get any more pets because it means we can't go on holiday." Right. A spider can look after itself. <laughs> I love the idea. Someone say, um, do you mind coming around? We're on holiday for a week. Do you mind coming around with a fly every two days? <laughs> yeah, I, I just uh, just keep an eye on it. I mean, I, I thought Spider Island was weird, but keeping a spider under the telly with Tipex on it as yeah. a pet. What should we do next? What should we do next? It's too much. We uh, get, do we need them out of the way? Get, do we need them out of the way? Yeah, just uh, let's, get, let's explain it again. If you're new, um, I'm sort of on a bit of a mission to find out you know, we've got a lot of animals and insects in the world and stuff. Yeah. Um, do we need them all? <laughs> it still amuses me. <laughs> so we've found out we've got to keep jellyfish. We've done octopus. She yeah. said we've got to keep them. This week, snails. Do we need them? Doing some research, uh-huh. right? Um, I'm sort of working my way through different creatures and insects and stuff that's on the planet. Yeah. Right? Um, and finding out if we need them or not, right? Yeah. Do you know much about snails? Um, sea snails? Well, yeah. Snails in general. Um, I don't know much about snails, land snails, not a bit about sea snails, like whelks, top shells, that sort of thing. Would you say they're important? Uh, what sort of sense do you mean by important? Say if we had to sort of get rid of some animals and insects and that, because we're running out of room. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because I'll tell you what I know about some snails. I don't know if this applies to sea snails as well. I mean, I called you today because a lot of other places are short. Yeah. Right? So um, I know um, they like to eat stamps, apparently. They glue on stamps. They right. love it. Right? Right. Um, apparently a lot of um, letters and stuff aren't getting to where they're meant to be getting because snails are crawling into letter boxes and eating right. the stamps. That obviously doesn't apply to the sea ones, mm. but that that's a problem they're causing. All right. Uh, are you, were you aware of that? No. No. I didn't know that. you glad you answered the phone today. Right. They love beer. Beer, yeah. He doesn't. And also, I don't know if this is right, but I heard that they sleep for 13 years or can do. Right. I've, I wouldn't know if they can sleep for 13 years or not. But, I mean, sea snails are pretty important. Yeah, they're. they're, they're they do quite a good job in the sea. They uh, um, graze on algae in there. 
But, they but, provide food for other other animals. I mean, you can say that about any fish, you know, or any animal. Why do they? Why do they exist? Would Would you be know. upset if you know someone said we're getting rid of them? Oh yeah, yeah. You would they're, be. They're an animal, you know. I wouldn't. Forget being like favouritism and all that I get for them, right? There'll yeah. be other things knocking around you can sort of spend your time looking after. You'll still have a job. Don't be worrying about that. Because I'm not going to get rid of all the fish. Jellyfish need looking after, so you're safe. Yeah. But do we need them? Come on, there's loads of people saying, come on, we've got to move on through the animals, and you're holding them up saying, well, I, I want to keep them. Well, who's, who's saying we need to... That just sounds a bit, just sounds a bit crazy to me. Just, just imagine... Do you know what I mean? And, and they would come to you because you work in an aquarium, so they'd, they'd be asking for your advice. Right. And you're slowing it down. Well, they ask for my advice and I'm giving it to them, so, you know, that's what I think anyway. Yeah, but snails, you know, I mean, like I say, they, they drink beer and that, you know. What do, what do they do apart from some food for a, for a whelk? They were, they were around, their descendants were around a lot longer, uh, longer than we have been. Yeah, they've been around a long time, but what have they done? Well, they survived that long, so they must be doing something pretty good. Well, apparently they sleep for 13 years, so really, even though they've been around for ages... I, 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 was, I think that sounds a bit... I don't think they sleep for 13 years. Not all, I mean, not all of them, just, just, the, just the tired ones. So, snails, do we need them? Well, yeah, I just think they've got to... Just as, you know, it's not for us to say, do we need them or not, we can't just... So, so you think we should keep them? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Carl, I'm proud of you. That he was... was getting really quite annoyed. I know. What, is it? what did he think he was doing? What? <laughs> I don't know what you tell these people. I mean, you don't get their permission to play this out, do you? You well, don't tell the him. thing is, right, I, yeah, I sort of told him what it was about, but we won't say who he is or where he works, because yeah. it doesn't matter. I just needed to speak so, to someone who knows. <laughs> I know the fact that you were trying to get an answer out of him by suggesting that he would be safe, because <laughs> he could look after jellyfish if he gave the OK to destroy snails. <laughs> he was I, getting livid. You could... oh. Yeah, if that was like a blob, like a slug, there's no way people would be that friendly towards it, and it just annoys me how you get this pecking order. For like, no matter what creature you are, favouritism. And that slug was only eating that bird poo because it wasn't being offered stuff. If it was offered toffees or whatever. <laughs> well, it's just sad, isn't it? It's, it's come to that. That's what its life has come to. <laughs> yeah, but it's not a it mollusk like that's down on its fucking yeah, luck. It didn't live in a big country house no, and his wife it left it the kids when he started hitting the ball. And I kind of thought, and look, they do only come out in the rain and it's depressing and it'll probably get killed in a bit. And that was its last meal. I just... That's <laughs> real! But it wouldn't care. prefer steak and chips, Carl. It no, doesn't a leaf. have... It must like a leaf or a... a you know, at the end of the day, it's an insect. They love It's not an insect! Well, it's part of that gang. It's part of that... <laughs> no, it's part it's of that... They hang out together. They it's hang out not. together. No, Why do you think it's part of that because gang? Because it, it knocks about in the woods in the same place as a spider does. But all I'm, uh, what I'm saying is they, they're eating boring stuff because that is what's... It's in not boring area. stuff to them. They're not. I have no opinion of it at all. They take in sustenance. No, but where you are is what you eat. When I'm in London, I'll have beans on toast for lunch. On holiday, what? Tapas? Go on, I'll have a bit. <laughs> so it's whatever you eat, what's in that area. I do watch a lot of insects and stuff, <laughs> and you never see them wasting time. They're always doing something, and ants carrying something somewhere. Sometimes I watch it, and it goes somewhere and comes back again. You think, does it know what it's doing? But at least it's trying. <laughs> what you now? If there was a what big... is it doing though? What is that ant doing? Work. It's doing. It's building a house. But it's... Or what? What's the point? It's everything it does is pointless. How can you say that? It's pointless. I'll it's tell just... you what. If if there was a bigger sort of being looking over the world, and they went right, let's look at the human race, and well, they'd look at the ants first, and they go right, they've got their hands full. They're carrying big stuff. They try to save time by carrying stuff that's way too big for them, really. <laughs> they could do that w between three of them. But they don't. They're all grafting hard. Then they go, right, hit the human button. They hit the human button, they watch the humans. The amount of people who are just sat about doing now... They're but reading about Amy Winehouse, Lily Allen in London at 2am. So what? <laughs> what are we doing? I agree with you, but what are you doing? You see, the ant analogy, joking aside, I think there, you hit on the fact that... Life is about working for what you get. 
and I'm right behind that. I am right behind that. Yeah. I think that's uh, I, I I think that's absolutely true. That's what I meant. What's dangerous is a, a boiling cup. kettle to an ant. At the end of the day, right? Yeah, but that's that's evil, isn't it? What? You know, I, I don't. I, I mean, you, you sometimes make out as if I'm an evil man. We had an ant problem mm. in the garden. Suzanne said we've got to get rid of these, mm. and I said, well, it's a bit out of order. They are outside. And yeah. She said, yeah, but there's, there's getting a lot of them. Mm. She went and popped the kettle on. Mm. I said, I can't handle this. I went in, right? <laughs> what, you didn't want to see the ants, man? That's sweet, you know, they're there. Yeah, they might be causing a problem, but I don't want to see this this mess. Now, the thing is, she went out, she poured the hot water on it. I left it a few minutes. I went out, I had a cup of tea. I thought, it's a waste of electrical well, yeah. <laughs> So I took my cup of tea out there, and I'm sat there, and then... I just saw one come back from wherever it had been. One ant. He looked devastated. <laughs> because that that had been away. As far as that was concerned, it had been out to get a leaf or whatever. He came back, devastation. <laughs> and it's it's that what oh. that, that's that's the thing that he summed up death for me, that. The the ants that are dead, they didn't know anything. Suddenly they were there, next minute, load of water, dead. It's the people who are still living in life. That are the saddest, aren't they? After yeah. that, and that summed it up. What do you think? That you ant came... would have been better off being there when it happened. How could you tell the ant was? What do you think? So you saw it, I mean, they run around in circles anyway, don't they? But this was just kind of going, "What's going on?" And what did it, did it slow down when it got nearer the nest? Did it drop the leaf and then you see it run the last few inches? It, it just kind of got close, and it was like a double take almost. <laughs> Almost like it got near the hole, and then it was like, hang on a minute, this can't be it because no one's around. And then it walked on, and it went, no, it is the hole. And it went back, and it, it just sort of stopped for a minute. Ah. Oh. And that, that for me, that's the sort of thoughts Descartes should have been having. What? Things that you can look at as a human uh, yeah. and appreciate it and understand it yeah. and go, yeah, that's true, that is like life. Instead of, oh, am I awake? Am I asleep or what? No. Well, you might as well be asleep because you're doing nothing else. <laughs> Carl, right? What what do you think it's like being a crab? If you if you could go now, your mind into a crab, what would you see? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What would you be thinking? What do you think of all the other things? The crabs you'd see, the 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 squids you'd see. What what what's it like? Do you think? I want you to. It's like creative writing. Just think. Just let yourself go. Come on. Uh, it's got to be a crab. What do you think of a slug? What do you think to be a slug? What would you do if you were if you were transported now into a slug? What would you do? And you and Suzanne, you're suddenly in the kitchen, but you're a slug. And Suzanne's sort of like there, just making tea and that. How do you let her know I'd, it's you? It's impossible. I just chuck myself into the salt pot. Or <laughs> no, because what? What do you do? I'd I'd hate that. I'd hate, that would be horrible. That. <laughs> oh God. Have you ever read uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis, no, in which a man so. wakes up and he's turned into a giant beetle, and that's the yeah, that's the whole story. Uh, I think it might be of interest to you. So what happened to him with the beetle? Well, I don't want to ruin it for you in case you no, read it. I won't but be reading it, don't worry. He joined a pop group with three other people. He was brilliant. No, it's a really wonderful book. It's a kind of almost heartbreaking because, of course, he uh, he does, like Ricky's saying, he finds it very hard then to relate to other people, even though he still has the consciousness of a human. You know, his parents, his rest of his family, they don't know how to deal with him, you know, because he, he's a giant beetle. He becomes a freak, he becomes an outsider. It's a terrible, you but, know... But hang on, though. Is he a giant beetle? Or yeah. is he... Well, yeah, well, that's not going to go down well, is it? <laughs> that's, that course, people aren't going to like you. But if it's a normal-sized one, then you just get in with the other beetles, don't you? <laughs> Whereas if you're well, a giant... Sort of How would you do that? How would you ingratiate yourself? Right, so you're suddenly a beetle. You're Carl Pilkington, right? There's other people. They're doing their business. They're scuttling around. And you go, you go in there, and you go, and they, go, they look at you as a new beetle. What, what's your first... What do you do? How do you ingratiate yourself? Well, for a bit, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of barge in into their house and that. I'd I'd wait until they're out and about, and I'd I'd like like in life, right? Um, sort of help them out. I don't know what beetles do all day. I've never seen one doing anything. They just seem to be going from one place to another. Right. I've never seen them carrying anything. I don't know what they eat. I don't know what they do. <laughs> I don't know why we've got them, right? But what I mean is, I'd watch them and I'd sort of help them out. And I mean, you know, it's like going on a date or meeting a woman, isn't it? But what if you there is? Whoa, a hang there. on. What do you mean? What, what, how is it like going on a date with a woman? Well, it's like I said about Suzanne with her hot chocolate, she bought me that and I've gone, she's all right. Right. right? She gets me another one before I know it, she's living with me. <laughs> so, 
he's, you so you're, you're, you're all these, these beetles, they're scrolling around, right? You're sort of like watching them, and there's and then you realise that you want to mate with this female beetle. What do you do? What's your first move? Yeah, but I don't know what beetles do, do I? So I don't know how, how what you do. I don't know if you go up and go, all right. What do they do? How do they get on? Well, it's a different world. I, I don't know yet, do I? Because I haven't done it. Would but you feel bad because having your own mind in this beetle, right? Would you feel bad shagging a beetle? Would you feel that that was that was a bit sick because you've got a human mind? Well, no, because you just close your eyes and that, wouldn't you? Think of something else. So get round it that way. There's no point getting down about it because I'm stuck now as a beetle. So you've got to get on with it. <laughs> but if you're a slug, you said you'd throw yourself in the salt pot. What would you do if you were a beetle if you got depressed? And you see all the other humans. No, you see your mates, right? They got, they're got listening to the iPod. What would you do? Well, no, that's what I'm saying, though. Beetles are different because they do tend to hang about with each other. A slug's always on its own. It's a lonely insect, isn't it? It's, it's not an insect. All right, what is it? A mollusk. Right, they're lonely. I've never seen a load of snails all together or slugs wandering about. Those beetles <laughs> seem to knock about in crowds. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. oh, God! OK, right, another one. So they're sociable creatures, and it wouldn't bother you that, you're, that you've got the mind of Carl Pilkington in there? Because you um, can't communicate with these people because they don't speak English. They don't, they don't have any communication with you. Yeah, but if it's happened to me, there'll be another one in there. OK, then. Right, OK. Um, what would you do, right? <laughs> That's the most disgusting thing. What could it be? Um, right, what, what would you do, right, if you were suddenly a fly, right, and you were knocking around with the flies, right, and you had to land on some... Uh, excrement? Yeah. What would you do? Yeah, but I don't have to. What do you mean? You're a fly. You're yeah, but I it. wouldn't. No, I wouldn't be loving it, though, would I? Why? Because I'm me in that fly's head. <laughs> so I'd, I'd just... I don't think other flies would be going, come on, join in. I'd just be like, no, I'll, I'll wait here. Wait, wait, watch and that. Because they don't, I don't see why they have to do that. What would you do, right, if you had to go back and you were in a, um, you were had to go and put your mind in like the um, an unhatched uh, egg of something, like maybe one of those e like uh, that a wasp was injected with a spider. So you know you're in an egg, right, which is really uncomfortable, in a spider. How would you feel about that, Carl? You're a baby wasp in the abdomen of a spider. And I know everything that I know now. I'm, I'm sat in there. Yeah. And now I'm now I'm in a spider as a ba as an unborn wasp. What the fuck am I doing here? What's going on? I don't know what I do there. Uh, probably try and sleep. <laughs> There's nothing else to do though, is there? I just pray to God it never happens. <laughs>